and establishing this ministry. So this, this woman stops in to say thank you. I just stopped in to say thank you, the woman says. Well, we didn't know what exactly we were, she was thanking us for. I mean, it certainly could have been something that we did to help her or her family, but we didn't know. I hadn't recognized her. I was sure it was her first time through our doors, and yet she came in and she said, thank you. She came in and she said, thank you, because I used to drive down this street, right in the 2200 block of Center Avenue where we are, and when I drove down this street, I saw this woman just sitting on the street corner, roaming aimlessly from steps to steps, sitting in front of the abandoned buildings in that block. She said, I just want to thank you because you have no idea how badly I prayed that the, Lord, that the Lord would establish a ministry in this block for that woman who sits on your couch. We began to see how the difference in our approach, the difference in our perspective, also came together with the prayers of people who were suffering in these communities. And that when they encountered this, this ministry that they had been praying for, they recognized that it was of the Lord. That it was different than the other social services in the area. And they recognized that the difference was it was of the Lord. And that the work that Orthodox Christians had been doing by diligently trying to establish ministries from an Orthodox perspective were in response to the prayers of the suffering and brokenhearted. Now I tell you that it can be very, very difficult. And we always, we always desire to bring all of us together forward. Those who are suffering. Those in our churches. Sometimes we're not always on the same page. We desire everyone to be. But we're not always at the same place at the same time. There were, there were some who did not believe that this would work. There were some who didn't believe that the faithful would go into this community and do the work of the Lord from an Orthodox perspective. There are some who didn't believe that Orthodoxy would resonate in the hearts of a predominantly Baptist community. Though many people there this day are unchurched, they didn't believe those things. Faith is not only believing that God exists, it is believing that He is actively working in this world, in our lives, for our salvation. There are many who believe that God exists, but they did not believe that His hand was upon this ministry, even though we could see many signs that it truly was. And so, we didn't engage the negativity. We didn't engage the naysayers. When they said no, they said no. And we recalled the words that the Lord gave us. If they do not hear you, shake the dust from your feet. And we held steady. We had faith that the Lord would provide. No matter how many, how many said this will never work. We had faith that the Lord would provide. And we shook the dust from our feet and moved forward. Now the other challenging thing about having an orthodox ministry amidst the urban problems that are in our communities is that the gospel is radically different from the wisdom of the streets. And we have to be very honest about that. The gospel is radically different from the wisdom of these streets. The wisdom of God is different from the fallen wisdom of men. This we know, brothers and sisters, but if we establish an Orthodox Christian ministry, we will most certainly encounter these differences. 
we will most certainly encounter these differences. But when we do, we must maintain our commitment to the gospel, especially to those who do not believe it is possible. And when we confront those people, we call to mind the lives of the saints who were truly transfigured in Christ, who are examples to us of what is possible. You know, I often think of athletes running a marathon. I know that I am not able to run a marathon. Today, I have not trained for it. I know that there are many of us who are unable to run marathons. And yet, because we cannot run marathons, we mustn't say that it is impossible to run a marathon. There are many people who are unable to run marathons. And because they are unable to run a marathon, where they are where they're today in their life, because they are unable to run a marathon, they say that no one is able to run a marathon. And brothers and sisters, that is pride. And this we encounter on the streets each and every day. Love your enemies. And some will say, in days of old it was maybe possible to do that, but this is the year 2012. It is no longer possible to do that because where they are in their lives right then and there, they are unable to. But we know that we must maintain a radical commitment to the gospel and proclaim a gospel of repentance, a gospel of love, even when confronted, even when confronted with the fallen wisdom of the world, which teaches us that we mustn't, we cannot forgive and forget, that we cannot love each and every one that comes our way. We know that we can, and that by God's grace, all things are possible. There was a man who just yesterday came into my office. He, he came in. He didn't ask if he could come in. He came in and uh, he sat down. After he sat down, he asked, do you mind if I sat here a spell? <laughs> Of course, I said no, and so he began to ask questions about the perspective that we had. Because he had come to notice that when confronting the urban challenges that we confronted each and every day, we said a certain word a lot. We said love a great deal. 